And I'm back with another Voodoo 3 video. The video after this will be something else. Promise. It may or may not be 3DFX related. I don't know yet. In my last videos, we have examined a Voodoo 3 2000 and a Voodoo 3 3000, looked at their temperatures and tried to find their lowest core voltages before seeing artifacts on the screen. But there is still one more Voodoo 3 2000 PCI, which we haven't looked at yet. Today, we will find out which Voodoo 3 2000 has the better chip in terms of reaching higher frequencies relative to their respective core voltages. My main focus is still to lower the voltage at the core, reducing the overall temperature generated at the graphics chip. As you will see today, the decision ahead of us will prove to be challenging. So, let's have a look at the Voodoo 3 2000, which you may have seen in one of my previous videos. There was no VGA signal from the card when it was used in a system. A reflash of the BIOS was all that was needed to resurrect the card. The person I bought this card from told me that the blue heatsink was indeed added afterwards to provide better cooling, something Voodoo 3s can't get enough of. And some of you speculated this in the comments. Now, I could start with benchmarks to get a baseline of the current cooling solution, but since it is not the original heatsink, I decided to replace the cooler first. When I flashed the BIOS of this card, I noticed that it is possible to slightly twist the heatsink. At least, it is not glued with epoxy, which would make this process much more difficult. To get the heatsink off, I just move it back and forth. And sometimes I apply a bit more pressure into my twisting movement, and then again back and forth, slowly wearing down the adhesive. What I understood from the seller is that this card came without a heatsink, which of course shouldn't be the case for Voodoo 3 2000s. I assume it was purchased as a second hand card and someone else had removed the heatsink before. And there it is, finally got the heatsink off. It looks like there is an adhesive thermal pad at the edge of the chip, which was responsible of holding the heatsink in place. The center, however, looks like is covered with regular thermal paste. A rather interesting choice of combining different types of thermal interface material. This thermal pad has no chance against my plastic scraper. It's off in no time. I am very careful because I do not want to damage the surface, nor do I want to scratch the writing on the chip. And yes, the center is definitely covered in thermal paste. After I got most of the stuff off the surface, I removed the leftovers with isopropyl alcohol and very gentle rubbing with a magic sponge. And I'm really happy with the results. Now let's have a quick look at the heatsink I will put on this Voodoo 3 card. It is tall and will block two PCI slots below the slot the card is installed in. So it may not be a suitable heatsink for everyone. For my current purpose, however, it's great. And if one day I don't like it anymore, I can easily replace it with something else. What is great about this heatsink is that it has an adjustable mounting mechanism. The distance of the mounting holes of this Voodoo 3 card are non-standard 56 to 57 mm apart. At least I couldn't find ready heatsinks that would fit those measurements. A nice blob of thermal paste should do much better than thermal tape. And now I just have to mount the cooler and we will be done with a modification. I already added the mod gear to the card. And although the voltage regulator has a different model number on this card, it is identical to the voltage regulator of my other Voodoo 3s. Even the resistor that determines the voltage is 130 ohms, which is the same as the one on my other Voodoo 3 2000. Installing the heatsink was not as easy as I thought. It barely fit but having some flexibility with a mounting mechanism definitely helped. Great, we are ready to start testing and determine the lowest voltage setting for specific frequencies. First up is the stock frequency of 143 MHz. Without the mod attached, the voltage regulator supplies the graphics chip with 2.6 volts. Now that the mod is installed, we start at a voltage of 2.48. From there, we can slowly reduce the voltage until we see artifacts on the screen or the card crashes. For reference, my other Voodoo 3 2000 PCI starts artifacting at around 2 volts. Unreal Tournament is my choice for this video series. So here we are in one of my favorite Capture the Flag maps. Since I wouldn't expect anything to happen at a voltage much higher than 2.2 volts, I started reducing the voltage from this level. This is pure speculation and based on the results I got from my other Voodoo 3 2000 PCI. And around 2.125 volts we crash. But I was not able to see any artifacts on the screen. I did the same test once more and we pretty much got the same result. 
No artifacting before a crash may indicate that something else is failing before the 3D unit of the chip. What that is exactly? I don't know. I do not believe it is the memory, because all 8 modules on this card are powered directly from the 3.3V supply of our friend, the voltage regulator with a heatsink. During the second test, we crash a bit earlier at around 2.145V. For long term use, I would configure the card with 2.25V at a frequency of 143MHz. Ok, let's move on to the next level. Since the card didn't artifact, let's see what happens when we push the card slightly higher, but not yet to the level of the Voodoo 3 3000, more like a Voodoo 3 2500 at 155MHz. I am pretty confident that we can start at a voltage of 2.25V and work our way down from there. If the 3D unit is the limiting factor, then I would expect the card to fail at a higher voltage, since we are running at a higher frequency of 155MHz at the moment. But so far the card looks good. We are at 2.15V and no artifacts or crash yet. At a voltage of 2.11V, we start to see artifacts. You can see flickering appear on the rocket launcher. And now we crashed. The card gave up at about the same voltage as it did with 143MHz. For long term use, I think this card should work well at 2.25V and a frequency of 155MHz. The next level is the Voodoo 3 3000 at 166MHz. I no longer believe we should start at 2.25V with our tests. In a previous video where I tested my other Voodoo 3 2000 at 166MHz, we got artifacts at around 2.43V. Therefore, I start at the highest voltage I can get with a mod attached. And we already reached below 2.4V without artifacts. That's great! Although this card didn't work at voltages below 2.15V, it seems to do better at higher frequencies. We are approaching 2.3V and the card still works fine. This card can definitely run at Voodoo 3 3000 levels. At 2.25V however, we start to see artifacts. Since the card didn't crash, I think for long term use a voltage of 2.3 at a frequency of 166MHz should be fine. Let's move on to another made up Voodoo 3 card, the Voodoo 3 3250 at 175MHz. I did not try to go beyond 166MHz on my other Voodoo 3 2000, so this is uncharted territory. We are starting again at a voltage of 2.48V and work our way down. First positive news is that the card seems to be working at 2.48V. So it definitely does a lot better than my other Voodoo 3 2000. Don't you hate when you have your mod attached to your Voodoo 3 reducing the voltage and a bot tries to steal the show? Ok, where were we? Ah, uh, 2.38V. That is a really great value for this chip that is supposed to be only a Voodoo 3 2000 chip. But soon after, we see white dots on the screen. Artifacts and my bot friend have returned. I think this card should be fine with a voltage of 2.45V at a frequency of 175MHz. And now let's go for our final test. Voodoo 3 3500 level at 183MHz. At this level we may face another issue. The card is equipped with 6 nanoseconds memory chips, which are rated for up to 166MHz only. We already surpassed that with the previous overclock, but there is usually a safety margin. Real Voodoo 3 3500 cards were shipped with memory chips rated at 55 nanoseconds or 183MHz. But let's try that anyway. And here is Unreal Tournament with a Voodoo 3 2000 overclocked to 183MHz. <laughs> and as you can see artifacts at 2.48V right after the game starts. There is nothing I can do at this moment, except to mod my mod by replacing the current resistor, or to get rid of the mod entirely. I can imagine that the card works at 183MHz and a default voltage of 2.6V. Do you wonder if it plays? It sure does. But that is not a Voodoo card I like to own. Now I have shown you all the choices I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I would not keep the card at its original frequency of 143MHz. This chip has a lot more potential. So, we have the following choices. 
Maybe I have to replace the memory chips to operate this card successfully at 183 MHz, which is a lot of work considering the minor performance improvements we get. Also, don't forget that this is the PCI version of the Voodoo 3, which may be limited by the bus. I wouldn't want to replace the memory chips on this nice card, because there is always the chance to mess it up and break the card entirely. Since I spent time to create this video, you will spend time to decide what I should turn this card into. There will be a poll in the community tab to which you will find a link in the video description. Once the results are in, I am going to change the text in the BIOS of the card to reflect the change in performance. And we can look at a few benchmark results. On a personal note, I hope to break 10,000 subscribers on my channel with this video. So please subscribe to my channel to get notified whenever I upload something new. And like the video if you enjoyed today's content. A sincere thank you to all my Patreons for your invaluable support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.